Hi there, my name is Rocio and I am a part of Group 7 with Brittany, Carissa, Rachel, myself, and Sadie. Our project is called SEEDS, which stands for Support, Empowerment, and Educational Development for STEM. To begin with, the issue that we are addressing is the huge disparity within the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM field. There is just a huge disparity among different race and obviously gender, and that is within educational fields and in the career. According to the NSF Indicators Report, women STEM majors in colleges across the United States, there is only 16% of women with bachelor's degrees in science and engineering, and 5% who have doctorate degrees who are also specifically women of minority. So, in addition, women are only 28% of the workforce within STEM professions, while 67% of the workforce is white. SEEDS is a program that we are implementing to provide support for the underrepresented groups, specifically women and minority women, to expose them to the crucial skills needed to be a part of STEM and further foster their passion and confidence to be studying and working in the field of STEM. So the problem is, is that within the STEM field, there is a five to one gender ratio. So that already shows the huge inequality within the field of STEM. Furthermore, research indicates that men are often more incentivized to perform well in STEM-related subjects, while women, on the other hand, are often incentivized to be interested in other areas like social work and education and so forth. Burton also highlights how women perform just as well as men within the STEM field when they are. They just are often have less support and people often deter them from pursuing fields in in STEM versus other major industries and sectors. In addition, Musius et, et al. found that minorities were having a hard time staying in the STEM programs because there was just not enough academic preparation in STEM. So that means that students come in taking these classes in STEM, but they don't have the capacity, the foundation to know how to study and do well in these exams, therefore not are not earning good grades and do not have the support overall to succeed within the educational sector in STEM. The goals of, of SEEDS, our program, is to expose young girls and specifically minority young girls to the fundamentals of STEM programs at early ages in order to promote a good foundation of STEM skills and proficiencies. Because of what I noted earlier, how students go to college and then they struggle because they don't have a foundation. So that is one of our main focuses is to ensure that young girls have the foundation within science and math to be able to understand other interests or sectors within STEM. Furthermore, the goal is to increase the rate of women attending colleges within majors of STEM at different universities. So our third goal is to ensure to close the gender and race gap within the STEM field and make sure that more women are being hired and have access to jobs within STEM fields. Lastly, our fourth goal is to ensure that SEEDS participates in changing the future of STEM by creating a more diverse STEM field by preparing women and minorities to be a part of the field and successful. The components within the SEEDS program is that it specifically targets 
middle school and high school girls. So by providing opportunities for girls and minorities to become interested in STEM during this early on phase in their education, it provides an opportunity for these young girls to have that foundation, to build that foundation within the STEM skills needed and also helps gear these young women towards a pathway to be interested in jobs and careers within STEM. So the first aspect of the program is that students will have the opportunity to meet with women and minorities who already have jobs and careers within STEM fields so that they have the opportunity to establish connections and network and hopefully leading to potential mentors. So if they have questions and want to go and learn more about their specific job, they have the opportunity to do that. The second aspect is that students will really have hands-on learning with their teachers by ensuring that they develop new skills with good, engaging STEM-based activities in order to help build and support development and skills needed for science and math. Third, students will receive extra assistance in tutoring in STEM subjects, which will contribute again towards the skills needed for STEM. Lastly, students will have the opportunity to attend field trips with high-tech STEM labs maybe universities and other STEM-related locations. The implementation of the SEEDS program looks a little different than other programs just because it encourages student input within the decision-making process. So initially, it is up to school districts to provide funding to specific schools to implement the program. Once funding is allocated, principals to those specific schools are requested to find a teacher to run the SEATS program and in addition, hire support staff as in tutors and any kind of other support staff. Next, SEEDS teachers are encouraged to work with the support staff in order to develop engaging activities tied to the suggested curriculum. Then, SEEDS teachers are encouraged to bring students into the fold of the planning for monthly guest speakers or field trips to ensure that they have input and are being are able to go to locations that will ultimately be life-changing and impact them as needed. The cost of the SEEDS program statewide is $7,500,000. So that number is based off of the INSPIRED program, which is the AVID program. The Department of Education stated that that program was given $7,735,000 and in order for the SEATS program to be effective, it is broken up into three categories. The first is field trips, which is $2 million, and then $5 million for teachers and staff because it is very important to pay teachers and staff well. And lastly, $500,000 for supplies. And that comes out to a total of $7,500,000 in order to provide this program to several school districts within the state of California. 
So on top of this, the school districts will need to award these grants using regional data in order to allocate the funds appropriately based off of student numbers, student need, and this will need to be adjusted annually. Lastly, in order to grow the program, other funding sources such as private grants and scholarships would tremendously help in order to impact the needed change within the STEM field for young women and women of minorities. Ultimately, the evaluation of the policy looks at doing a longitudinal study by following up with participants during key educational points. For example, during their eighth grade promotion, high school graduation, college choice and degree when they're making their decision to attend colleges. And it is very important for seeds to track them during these time frames. In addition to that, seeds will do an entry and exit survey annually when they're a part of the program to assess where they're at in terms of skills and to see what kind of skills they developed to receive feedback and help narrow career interests of these students. And most importantly, to receive feedback of the program, the SEEDS program, such as understanding the availability of tutors, if that needs to change, or if this school is implementing the pro- the program to its best capacity, or if there are any other room, areas or room for growth within the program. Ultimately, it is crucial for SEEDS to track how many women are going into STEM majors when they attend universities and then follow up with them when they do get a job or a career in STEM. So that will also be the ultimate goal within the longitudinal study is to ensure that they are in this program and end up within a career or job in STEM.